Hello and welcome to lesson 3.1 serial communication. So in this lesson, we'll use a serial port to communicate with an external application. In this case, it will be processing. Um, we will send data from a, from a potentiometer and a photoresistor through the serial port and utilize that data in the processing software. Our learning objectives for this lesson will be transmitting data over serial using processing and store data on a spreadsheet file or also known as data logging. So as you can see here, we have our potentiometer right here, which basically measures a variable resistance level as we turn the knob, and then here is our photoresistor. A photoresistor basically measures the amount of light being inputted into the sensor, and it also gives us an analog value. So with these two values, we are going to send these, these, va these analog values through the serial port to an external application. So, um, in this case, we're going to be using processing to read all our data. Um, serial communication makes Arduino so versatile because you can connect it to different types of software or even hardware such as a Raspberry Pi or even in an Android or iOS device. So with that in mind, um, later on we're going to be able to control an interface or control, turn ob control, rotate, and turn objects in the processing software. Right now, we're just going to output the values in the software and store it on a spreadsheet file. So I'm going to go over here on the code, and I'm going to run the processing software. So as I run it, it says port connection established. As you can see here, I have three values, x, y, and z. x is, is coded to be our our potentiometer, Y is our photoresistor, and Z is just a constant value, which is 30. I will go over the code after I'm done explaining. So, as you can see, my X is 111 right now. If I turn my potentiometer, you can see it change in variance as I turn it. It's going higher and higher, and my Y is a constant 23. Um, I'm going to shine a light from my phone on the pretend, on the photoresistor, sorry. As you can see, it's going up. That means more light is being is being exposed to the sensor. As I take it away, it's gonna go down. And if I try to turn off the lights, you can notice that the sensor reading is going down to 19. I turn back on the lights and it's back to 22. So, as you can see, these three values are outputted in the console portion of processing. Now I'm going to show you all our data that is stored onto this file called dataoutput.csv. Um, CSV is basically a comma-separated um, spreadsheet. So as you can see, I recorded the time, the x, y, and z. Um, these two here will be used for later on in the next tutorial. So as you can see, there's a time that increases. It's measured in milliseconds, and then here are my values. My, this is my potentiometer, this is my photoresistor, and this is my constant value of 30. So as you can see, if I scroll down the spreadsheet, I have all my values recorded and stored in this file over here. So you see it all changes. Oh, 40 is when I shine the light on it. See, it goes down, down, down as I take away the light, and you can see where I put 19. And this is where I turned off the lights. And then this is where I turned on the lights. So this becomes very, very useful if you want to graph this data or record data over a period of time. Um, this, this again, makes Arduino so versatile because you can use it to, to track or monitor any type of system and while you're away from the actual device so it can do its own thing by itself and then you can come back afterwards and then you can see all the data and store it on let's say an SD card or even on your computer. Right now the data is being recorded through processing and my laptop. Um, Arduino, the Arduino Uno does not have a built-in device that, or a built-in hardware, sorry, that stores data that is on the board. It does have a memory cache on it, but you're not able to store large amounts of data on it. 
or record it, sorry, that you can view later on like an SD card. However, it does have uh, separate SD card modules which allow you to do the same thing and record data onto that SD card. Um, you can also connect the Arduino to a Raspberry Pi which has a built-in SD card and again allows you to do, to do the same effect. I'll put a quick screenshot of the breadboard diagram on Fritzing quickly and then you can pause the video and wire your Arduino board respectively and then I will go over the code and go over how serial communication works. Okay, let's start off with the code. First off, we're going to write our Arduino program and then we're going to write our processing program right after. Okay, so first off, we're going to have to start off, we're going, we're going to have to include our software serial library. So we're going to do a hashtag and include software serial dot h. And again, this will initialize our serial connection port to processing. So now that we have the library installed, we can go ahead and use its class to initialize our port. So we're going to write software serial my serial and then the default pins for um, the USB serial is 0 and 1. So we're going to type in 0 and 1. This represents transmitting and receiving. So now we're going to initialize our three variables x, y, and z to pass in three different parameters through the serial port. So we're just going to go int x value, int y value, and int c value. Okay, now that we have those three, we're also going to initialize our potentiometer value and our photoresistor value. So we're int pot value, int photo value. So these will store, this will initialize, this, this, these will initially store, these two variables will store our analog values. Okay, now that we have our analog values, we also have to um, declare the pinholes. Let's go int, I like to make them capitals, pot underscore pin equals a0. Int photo underscore pin equals a1. So that means I'm plugging in my two sensors into analog pin 0 and analog pin 1. There's a trick to sending bytes of data over the serial port. Um, the serial port is restricted to send one, one byte at a time, right? So one byte is equal to eight bits. Eight bits is zero to 255 characters. In that case, we can only send numbers between zero and 255. So if I'm sending a wide range of values from zero to 1023, that's not possible because it would, it would only register or only read numbers between zero and 255. If you want to send more values, there's something, there's different methods called byte shifting, which basically reads your first half of the number, sends it over, and then reads your second half, sends it over, and then it constructs it, it constructs the number again in the other program. However, we're just gonna to touch on numbers between zero and 255, which is eight bits. So in order to send our three values, we're going to write an array. This makes it easier for us because we can put this array in, in, a, in a loop, which can send our x, y values into x, y, and z, x, y, and z. Okay, we're just gonna put zero, zero, and zero. Okay. So void setup, we're just gonna declare our, not declare, we're gonna state that our x, y, and z values are initially zero, z value equals zero. Okay. And also our potentiometer and photoresistor values. Pot value equals zero and photo value equals zero. And we're gonna begin our serial port by writing my serial dot begin equals 9,600. As, as you've probably seen before in our other tutorials, I, I always wrote serial dot begin 9,600. That was to initialize our serial monitor over here. Now we're used, now we declared our own, our own type of serial that's called my serial, right? My serial is gonna be the one 
that's going to communicate with the processing program. Um, however, we're not going to use serial.begin in this tutorial just to just to not further complicate things later on. Okay, so we're done writing in the setup. Now we're going to start in our loop. So in our loop, we're going to write pot value equals analog read pot underscore pin. We've done this method before. It's just reading basic, basic analog values from that pin. And then go pot value again equals map pot value 0, 1023, 0 to 255. Again, we've done mapping before. Um, it basically just maps, takes our original range of numbers and scales it down to 0 to 255 instead of 0 to 1023. So now we have that scaled down. That is our potentiometer value. We're also going to scale down our photoresistor value. So we go photo value equals analog read, photo underscore pin. Take that value and scale it down as well equals map 23, 0, 255. There we go. So now we have our numbers ready to be sent to the port. We have our analog values. Now we're going to put them in our x, y variables. So we go x value equals pot value, y value equals photo value, z value equals 30. We're going to keep z as a constant value. So now I'm going to put x my byte equals zero. My byte at address 0 equals x value. My byte 1 equals y value. My byte 2 equals z value. So now we have our three values stored into our array. So now it's stored into the array. Now we're going to send the values over the serial port. So um, it's remember when we always wrote serial dot print line, and then we typed in whatever we wanted to print to the console or to the serial monitor. We're going to do something similar to that, but it's called my serial dot write. This will make sure that we write the byte of data. Right? So this will make sure that it writes the byte of data over the serial port so we can obtain our original numbers again later on. So we're just going to write my byte i, oops, um, this, um, sorry, I skipped the for loop, sorry. So this is going to be written in a for loop for int i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, open bracket, close bracket. Done. And then we're just going to add the delay here so it doesn't write too, too fast. Delay 300 milliseconds, which is really fine. Okay, it's small enough that it won't affect the speed or performance of our program. Okay, so just to go over this right here, we have our three values stored into our array. Now that we have it stored into our array, we're going to use this for loop to send them in order from x, y, and z, x, y, and z, x, y, and z. Right? Since we can only write one value at a time across the serial monitor, we're going to organize it by setting the values in synchronous together. So it's, so it's always going to go in a specific order so we know which one is which, right? So it's always going to go x, y, and z and repeat x, y, and z, x, y, and z. Since we know that the order is not going to change or anything. So this is basically all our code that we need for um, Arduino. Now we're going to uh, launch the processing program and start writing in there. Okay, now that we launch our processing program, let's get to it. So we're going to import a serial library. The serial library will read all our serial data from the Arduino. Import processing dot serial dot star semicolon. Okay, that imports the serial library. Now let's write a string. This string will represent our serial port. So string port equals colons or quotation marks com three, right? So if you're on a Windows, uh, most likely it'll say com 
one, two, three, or four. That's your communication ports in your computer. Um, if you're on a Mac, it may say something more complicated. It may say something like dev slash cu dot usb slash dev slash ty. Um, same thing, you just have to look for it. It's, it's the same connection you use to establish your ports on the Arduino software. You can basically just copy and paste that into here. Or not copy and paste, you read it and then you type it into here. So now um, we're going to use um, Print Writer. So Print Writer basically uh, will write our, our data that we use to a, to a file. So in this case, we're going to go Print Writer M Logger. So we're going to store all our data to this class over here. So int, oh, next up we're going to go serial, start our serial class, serial my serial. Now, oh yeah, this looks good, okay. Int x value, I'm going to reinitialize my x, y, and z values so I can take them my original x, y, and z values from Arduino and use them again in processing in the original x, y, and z. Okay, int x value, int y value, int c value. Okay, after that, we're also going to initialize our array again. My byte equals zero, zero, zero. That's our three size array. Okay, um, we're also going to do this, float time. We're going to use this later on to keep track of our data that's being sent over a period of time. Here we go void setup. This is like, this is exactly the same as the void setup in Arduino. It only run, runs once. Okay, we have a void setup. We're going to go my serial. This will establish a new serial connection. New serial. So my new serial this, our port, 9,600. We gotta make sure our speeds match, match the same on each program. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to go if my serial dot available is equal to zero. Then we're gonna print line Port connection established. Oops, we got a space. There we go. Port connection established. Okay, let's also put delay right here. Just because. And then now we're going to initialize um, zero to all our x, y, and z value. It's just good practice. Now we're going to create our file to data log everything. So to do that, we're going to go mlogger equals create writer quotations data output dot csv. That's going to create our spreadsheet file. And the name is going to be data logger or data output. Sorry. And then we're going to print line mlogger dot print line. So the thing with CSV files to create a new column, it separate it, it gets separated by a comma. Hence the CS stands for comma separated in a CSV file. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this right here. Um, this is just my titles of each of the columns. You can use it to whatever you want. Um, the plus sign um, basically says time and then a comma and then it's going to go x comma y comma c value m val comma m enter comma so m enter and m val we'll use that later on for the next tutorial following up so now let's write in a void draw so void draw works just like void loop since processing is a very visual program um, it, it says it, it's named void draw. Void 
put in close bracket, there we go. Now we're going to initialize our time at the very top, time equals millis. This, may, this basically means time equals the milliseconds ran once started. Okay. Now we got to go background equals zero. This is basically just the color of the background. Doesn't matter. No stroke. Doesn't matter again, since we're not doing anything visual just yet. Now we got to write a while loop to check if the serial port is being constantly written to. So we're going to go while my serial dot available is greater than three. We're going to do greater than three because we're going to wait till the first three um, values is sent. And then we're going to read it again, okay? Just to make sure that everything will stay in order, we're going to wait till all three values are sent, and then we're going to start executing the while loop. So there's our while loop. What we're going to read, what we're going to put in the while loop is our serial.read. So, just like in Arduino, we're going to use a for loop to keep everything in order. Equal zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. Open and close bracket. There we go, my byte i equals my serial dot read. So remember when we did the serial dot write in Arduino, we put it in a for loop of size three. We're gonna read it the same way. So now we read from zero, one, and two, zero, one, and two, we're gonna store in our x, y, and z values. This is just to make better sense of what's going on. Since we know that everything's going to be written in order, we can now confirm that my byte zero, the very first, the very first um, byte that's going to be read, is our x value. Then the second one's going to be our y, and the third one's going to be our z. Now we're going to print it to the processing console and then we're going to print it to our CSV file. All right, we're going to go print line, x. You can write this however you want, comma, x value, comma, y, y value, oops, I put two commas, y value comma, and then z, z value. Okay, so now it's writing to the words of the console. Oh, I forgot a comma over here. Okay, now we're gonna go outside that loop, and then we're gonna start writing to our CSV data file. So mlogger.printline. Let's make this a bit more organized. So I'm still going to write inside of the brackets, but I'm just going to make some space. Now print line time plus. So we're first we're going to write our time variable plus x value plus comma plus y value. I know it gets a bit confusing with all these pluses and commas, but you always got to put a plus after each variable or after each quotation. Comma. Plus z value. Okay, that's it. Let me just make it look a bit nicer. Okay, there we go. Thank you. So, there we go. Now that we have our three values reading in an order. We have it printed down below, and then we have it writing towards our, our CSV file. So this is basically how you transfer your data from an Arduino to any type of external application. Um, it all goes through the serial communication. Processing is the very most straightforward and easiest to pass through. Um, if you're going to transfer Arduino to um, 
the Android SDK or even Xcode, it's a bit more complex as it requires more libraries and such. Especially with Android SDK, it has to work with the compatible, the, it has to be compatible with different phones and such. So with Xcode, it's a bit different. Uh, sometimes it's it's sort of it's not as easy as processing, but it's also not as hard as the Android SDK. Again, as I stated at the beginning of this lesson, you can also um, write a file on to a Raspberry Pi or a external SD card reader reader module chip for the Arduino. I'm just gonna go over Void Draw once again, just to summarize it. Um, so we have our while loop, right? So basically the while loop will keep on executing as long as this statement's true. So if my serial dot available is greater than three, so if there's if there's three data, if there's three pieces of data being sent through the serial part, then it's gonna execute this. So if we send over our three, we're gonna start reading our serial. So uh, when we start reading our serial, we're going to store it into our array at the same time. We're going to store it into array of in, in the array addresses of 0, 1, and 2. And we're going to keep it in that order. To keep it in that order, that's why we use that for loop. right? This for loop will make sure that we always write 0, 1, and 2, 0, 1, and 2, and then store it into x, y, z, x, y, z. And that will make sure that everything will stay in order and for us to not get our numbers mixed up as it passes through the serial port. And remember, the serial port only will only read one byte at a time. After that, we store in our x, y, and z values, and then we print those values onto our console, and then we also print it towards our CSV file. Okay, this is basically it for 3.1 serial communication. Um, this carries on to 3.2 which is when we integrate graphics into processing. Um, we, we will use these values that we sent over the serial port to control different shapes and rotate them accordingly. Okay, thank you for listening. If you want to learn more, please read through the lesson as I go more in depth on bits and bytes and how serial communication works. And this code will also be posted online again. And thank you for listening and have a good day.